Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Marvin Aline, who is the owner of European Kitchen Installation. Uh, Going to be sitting down chatting about business, about entrepreneurship, about you know all this crazy stuff when it comes to the now journey of entrepreneurship these days. Um, so, first off, thank you for joining me. So excited to be to be sitting down. Why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You know, give us kind of the the ten thousand foot view of who you are and tell us about the business. Well, first off, I'd like to say, as you said before, my name is Marvin Allen. I'm actually an immigrant from Georgetown, Guyana, which is in South America. I've been in this country for probably, I don't know, 35 years, you know, for a very long time. Um, I'm originally from New York, but I've moved around a bit, been in Florida, um, uh, went to Georgia for a little while, and now here in Austin, Texas. And my background really is in the construction industry. About 20 years I've been in the business and I've come here to Austin and started a kitchen installation brand because it's one of the formidable parts of doing a home that has kind of a beginning to ending aspect where it's one of the most important aspects of the house. And it's where you can really kind of get grounded and leave a lasting impression for homeowners. Very cool. I love that. Um, so I always like to kind of just start by setting the stage. Um, and I think you may have gone through a little bit of this already, but I always like to just ask, uh, based on the fact that we chat with so many different businesses in so many different uh, growth cycles, stages in their business journey, et cetera. Um, you know, generally speaking for you, what is ownership structure look like now i'll frame this up a very specific way um are you a sole founder uh do you have business partners that you can kind of rely on that you chat with and kind of build the business together um is this a business that's you know you've taken on outside investment you've got a board that you report to kind of generally speaking how has that been structured for you well for me it's a privately um owned structure the owner the other owner partner is my wife which I put her on it because I think it's important to kind of share um, that aspect of ownership, especially with, you know, people in your life to that extent. So they can have a, a more of an ownership stake and understand and help you make decisions. But as far as any outside, you know, everything is paid for by me. All of my tools, any investments or anything is my money invested into it. And it kind of, it, it's the best way I would say to go about if you can. In my business, a lot of times people, you know, need outside investments for tools and, and, and merchandises and vans and stuff like that. But this is all solely mine. Oh. <laughs> my. I love it. I love it. And, and that gives some good context. Um, so this leads me to probably one of my favorite questions. Uh, when you look at your business today, what role do you play? Or maybe how many different hats as the business owner? Do you have to wear in your business <laughs> on any given day? Uh, okay. Um, first off, I'm an owner operator. There's a there's a huge difference between owner and owner operator. I'm an owner operator, meaning I would like I always have my hands in every project that I have going on. I like to see the foreseeable the beginning. I'm the one that goes to the meetings. I'm the one that does the walkthrough with the um the builder or the homeowner, whoever the, the case may be, and to hopefully be the last person to go through the punch list to make sure items are done correctly. Um, and also, when I go home at night, I'm the one that looks over the books. I'm the one that does, does the ordering. I'm the one that does the cleaning, you know? And so in in some stakes, it's it. if you allow your business to grow to the aspect of where you just become a different part. I think it takes on a lot of more of a management role. And it is a management role if you have, you know, trainees. But for the most part, I try to have where about three to four hats where I have to go to the meetings, meet the clients, you know, also make sure the inventory is right and make sure that the punches is right. And that's kind of the way I like to keep it. Fantastic. So with so many different hats that you get to wear, we'll say get to wear. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any that, you know, really stand out to you is, you know, you love these roles or these hats the most. And on the other end of the spectrum, you know, which of those hats 
as soon as you can give it to somebody else and you don't have to do it anymore, those are going to be the first ones to go. The, the first one to go is uh, the business owner aspect of it, the responsibility and the, the questions and the yes and no's that you have to say, you have to. But as I, I would rather be an operator, I would rather be the guy in the job that is going through the punch list and doing the work because that sometimes that guy can say yes to a lot of the things that the business owner can't. As a business owner, you have to watch the bottom line, your time in the job, you know, what you're capable of doing. And as an operator, you kind of have to make sure you go do these things. But in somewhere in between there, you know, someone has to keep track of the money and how it flows. And that's one of the hats that I kind of don't like to wear. I wear it, but I don't like to wear it. That's a fun one. It's a, you know, that's, that's one of those areas I feel like for most people, either you love it or you really don't love it. And there's yeah. not a whole lot in between. <laughs> yeah, there isn't. So, um, very cool. It's, it's kind of fun to, to hear different contexts and, and kind of where you're at in, in your business journey. Uh, but let's talk a little bit more about the business. Let's talk about what makes it so special. I, I always like to ask the question of like, generally who primarily does your business serve? And the way that I like to frame this up is if I'm sitting here in the audience and I'm watching this, how do I know that I'd be a really good fit to give you a call? Or I might know somebody that I can refer over to you. Well, the key thing with my business in the general sense is I'm, I'm a small but big business in the sense that my main clientele is builders that will have, th these are usually spec homes or custom homes. They would already have a design for a kitchen ready to build and ready to be installed. So what they do, they go through the process of design, measurements and everything. So when they have made the order for the kitchen and it gets delivered, that's when they call me up. They go, hey, we have this very special kitchen. It's this big. It's this whatever. And then they go, here, Marvin, here is the package. We would like to make sure this is installed correctly and to the specification. Then I go to the blueprint of the, of the builder to make sure it's placed exactly that they require. That's one aspect of a business. The other aspect that I really like is the homeowner that has seen a kitchen online or ordered a kitchen from Ikea or order from, because I don't, it doesn't matter to me because I know the one thing that's most important is the client. People have dreams and they have desires and they have things they want to accomplish. And that's what makes my business special is that I don't discriminate between a small project and a big project because I know it, at every end of it, everyone needs to be satisfied. So I try to make sure that I'm available and I appreciate anyone that comes to me. I've had homeowners call me, hey, I've had a friend call me hey, um, I got a friend that just ordered the kitchen. They don't have anyone to install it. Um, I know it's a Saturday, you know, can you come out and at least swap it out? Get a review, let them know what's possible, let them know what we can do. And, and I love those clients. I love working with homeowners and I love working with builders. So I'm, I'm open to anything. And I think that's what makes it special. A lot of times people can be flexible. And I always remember the bottom line I've worked from $30 million houses to $200,000 houses. So I know the bottom line is someone wants a product to be placed, to be done, and to be done correctly. So everyone just needs to be treated with respect. And, and, and that's, what, that's what makes me special because I'm there from start to finish. You can call me back at any time after the project is done to do an adjustment, to do a change, to do something, and I'm going to be there for you. That's fantastic. Uh, so let's talk marketing. Um, I always like to ask a few questions around marketing because it's the area that it's vital to every business. Got to have leads coming in the door, people that you can chat with to, to be able to, to make a sale and, and move on to the next step. Um, but yeah. it's not always the easiest one to, to navigate, especially in today's environment. Um, what if, what have you found to be successful in, in marketing or how do you get the word out about the, the work that you do and, and attract to the types of clientele that you want to work with? Um, I think mainly it's uh, marketing is a touchy subject. When I first got here, I did um, BBB, which is um, uh, which is a um, like a product driven service with a website and all that. Websites work great, but honestly, the one of the best things that work well is kind of word of mouth. It's 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 an old 
<laughs> it's an old true substance. And there's eight, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. Instagram is a very powerful tool in the in the right hands, you know, but then, you know, we have all this other algorithm and all this other stuff to meet up with. But word of mouth is the best. I mean, if you do a good job for one person, I I would and and that one person sees it and tells 10 more people and that 10 more people tells 10 more people. This is actual data that we can say is formidable and it's it's good. So I, I think word of mouth is the best. I don't spend too much money on marketing. I may do an email blast through Instagram every once in a while, but as far as marketing, I don't have a marketing budget where I go out there and I say, I'm going to do a billboard or a thing. But what I do do is I have a lot of, like I'm very recognizable in my logo. I have my logo of my shirt, my hat, you know, my jacket and where I can see people and people can see me and they can be recognized. Brand recognition is very, very important to me. So when I'm on any job site, I make sure that any one of my guys are, you know, represented correctly. Beautiful. Um, with word of mouth, I was going to ask, uh, do you have a, whether formalized or not, just like a generalized system that, you know, reminds you to say, Hey, you know, if you enjoyed the work here, make sure that you let somebody else know, or uh, if you know anybody else that, you know, may need a, a kitchen installed, you know, give us a call. Um, do you do anything like that? That kind of helps facilitate the growth of that word of mouth? Yes, yes, of course. Um, and that's another thing about being a business owner. You have to be able to kind of make sure you leave a, a mark on whoever you come in contact with as far as, you know, letting them know what your business is. You know, so everyone you do come in contact with, make sure you share your information. And that's the business owner aspect, you know, where you want to go out there and shake hands and say, hey, I'm Marvin, I'm with this, this is what I do. So I do that um, quite a lot as far as the in, into any project, into any atmosphere, where I feel that it's it's going to be beneficial. Excellent. Um, so let's I, I, lessons. What lessons have you learned um, as you know on this journey of of business? Uh, you know, if you think back on it, do you have a either one or two kind of memorable moments? You know roadblocks hurdles that kind of come to mind and maybe there's multiple but you know one or two that kind of stand out to you more than more than the others that you had you were faced with had to overcome and has allowed you to become the business owner that you are today um number one and one of the biggest things is you have to accept um when something doesn't like a particular job is not for you a particular environment is not for you like we're all not suitable um, to, to be in every environment. Some environments you may like, I, I remember for instance, there's this one project we had here in Austin. Um, I was contacted by the builder because he knew me from New York from doing another project and through another cabinet company. And it was, I, I don't know, a profit margin wise, like $250,000. It was a whole entire building. I could have, of course, among the staff, but I went to do the demo kitchen and the, the the chaos that ensued was, I, I just seen it right off the bat that they weren't organized. They didn't say what they had to say. They they weren't they weren't being accurate. And so I was like, this is just not something that I need to get myself into. And I think we just need to be honest with ourselves when we approach these situations that everything is not for you. You may have someone say, hey, come by at two to look at something. And let's say that maybe 2.05 or 2.10, they're not there. It's, it, you know, those kind of things are a head raised signs for you to be able to be watched out. And I've gotten stiffed in jobs. We've all, in this business, you you do get stiffed. You do get stiffed. And that's, a, and that's a bad thing. You can easily get stiffed than not follow up with a project. You get a bad name for not following up with a project, but you also get stiffed and what do you do about that now what do you have to do like sue the person so it's a it's it's just a thin line so instead of going through all of that be more aware of what you're walking into have some more conversations feel comfortable with the client make sure it's the right fit for you or you can give it up you know it's it's never it's never wrong to give up a project it's not that dire you know to just mm. to be money is never the topic of it the the topic of it is, is can you 
you know, provide the, the product and service that you're trying to accomplish. That's the biggest and most important part. Now, for that kind of self-awareness of being able to know that something might not be the right fit and, and that's okay, um, is that something that kind of has always been natural for you? Um, or did you have to kind of develop that over time? It, you you kind of have to develop it. And it, like you kind of have to be uh, aware. You have to be mindful. A lot of times in everyday life, you know, we get, you know, we can get squirrel, as I call it, where, you know, like if you're, like a dog is walking and he's walking fine and then he sees a squirrel. So, you know, you can always get squirrel <laughs> into a lot of things when you go into situations. So it's really, it's really hard for you to like, stay focused on you know your your direction so you if you, if you get squirrel you've got to be able to rebound back and that's the kind of the mindful aspect of making sure that you're dotting your eyes and crossing your t's at every point to be able to be successful to be able to take it from one level to the next level you know and you know like and setting goals are one of the the best things to do in 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 business I would 100% agree. What has been your approach to goal setting? How do you how do you look at setting goals for the next quarter, the next year, the next three to five years? I do. That's exactly what I do. I do. Um, I do like a four year goal plan, or sometimes a five year goal plan, and um, and I try to not be too aggressive because I understand consistency is really what determines making your goals and. I, I set them every five years. When I first got here, my business been over for six years. I said I wanted to be totally established. I came to Austin not knowing anyone, and I knocked on every cabinet company that makes cabinets to be able to provide my service. And 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 after a year or two of working by myself, one of my biggest things was to be able to hire someone to be on with me. And then you know, then I went from one to like five. And then it was an overload of of responsibilities and things. So then I had to bring it back down. And then I said, okay, I want to be able to, you know, be a certain another certain place in by five years. And now to the feel I feel comfortable with my businesses is recognizable here in Austin as for what I do and my brand. Like people can people recognize me when I'm just walking around regular, which is awesome. So that's that's one of my goals. That's my, my next is now to kind of be able to provide my own cabinet line, as far as building and providing where I'm not, you know, sourcing materials and stuff from other people. So that's my next five year goal set. So, you know, it's and and you just have to be patient and kind of just just be consistent, but also like you said, set goals. It works. You have to. That's fantastic. And I love that you actually answered kind of a question that came to mind, which is what is, what is the next five years look like? Um, so I'm excited yeah. to kind of hear that there's, you know, uh, the, the goal of having kind of your own cabinet line, things like that. Uh, do you see your role changing within the business as you kind of look forward out into the next five years? Do you, so you're still, still being kind of total operator. Do you bring on additional team? You know, what is, what does uh, that vision look like for you? Yeah, I think that vision will, will have to change in order to in order to when you start to transition into being able to have your own um line, you would have to then provide more services and you would have to be able to go and do the designing aspect. So I probably would have to pull someone to help me with the designing aspect. I can do it, but that would then, you know, put another hat on and I don't wanna, you know, stress myself. And then also to be able to sell a job and bid a job. I need still a job being produced. So I will have to have someone else. So hopefully in the near future, there will be, you know, two other people to help kind of, you know, facilitate what my mental and what, what the growth process is for the business. So, you know, like always understanding where your growth is and also understanding that, you know, you have to take this process in a, you know, in a slow, uh, you know, manner of being able to get it so you can execute it correctly. Hmm. I like that. Um, so as we start to kind of start to wrap up, I want to be respectful of time here. So I want to shift us to a couple of rapid fire questions below just really some additional wisdom nuggets for the other entrepreneurs yeah. and business owners out yeah. there. 
Uh, so I got yeah. four of them, four rapid fire questions here in total for us to go through. Uh, and then we'll finish off with a couple of questions here. Um, when you look at your journey, you know, through, you know, coming over to the U S to being in New York, to, to coming here to Austin and just kind of your journey overall, what would you say for you has been your key to success? Um, being humble, being humble, being consistent. Consistency is kind of the, the key thing. I think that I, I try to make an anchor in my life. You know, everything doesn't go smoothly. And we all know that that life interjects with everything that we do. Like if you like this, the saying says, you know, you show me your plan and I'll show you something else, you know? So I try to always, at least I know what I can try my best and then I can start over the next day. So I think I've always been able to just kind of do that. You know, I, I mean, we all hit pitfalls where we feel, you know, down, but I think just being consistent, being, it doesn't matter where it is, what's going on, be consistent, be, and be respectful and stay humble, you know, and mm. that's, and that's, that's been my key. Stay humble, always stay humble. I like it. If you could give just one piece of advice for their entrepreneurs, you could only give them one. What piece of advice would you give them? No, don't give up. Don't, don't ever don't ever give up don't give up and don't think it comes fast you don't anything that comes fast is it's it's usually something else tied to it go through the go through the process go through the be patient be patient and don't get it up if you really feel that something needs to work you know until you feel that it doesn't you know what i mean but you have to be consistent and you have to work like just mm -hmm. keep going don't give up Excellent. Book recommendations. What's one book that either you're currently reading or maybe have read most recently that you would recommend to the audience? Um, I wouldn't say um, much of a, my books are usually kind of more recreational mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, something that really kind of helped me home in the end. Um, unfortunately, we are at this age of technology where podcasts kind of have got me like riveted. I may even listen to a book like while I'm working. So it's not really most of a book. It's just a lot of podcasts and there's so much information out there that it's so it's so hard to kind of turn away from this huge cycle of information that you have. Yeah. So I'm probably a lot more in podcasts. Any any particular podcast that you enjoy the most? Um there's a being in the woodworking industry there is um uh, the one that I've been listening to is uh, it's one here in Austin. What's it called? In house, I think it's called in house. It's a uh, it's about um like a lot of contractors are on it and they're talking about their experience and work. So it's 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 really a lot about my industry that I really listen to, you know, mm -hmm. and some some sports stuff. I love it. That's fantastic. Podcasts are absolutely amazing these days. <laughs> of course uh, it is. Yeah, just did. Uh, and, you know, most of my books are also like audiobooks. So it's like listen to a book, listen to a podcast, listen to a book, yeah. listen to a podcast. Just all, you know, it's so much information we can we can uh, absorb. It's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, uh, so final rapid fire question, then we'll just kind of wrap out with the, the last questions here. Um, if you had to choose one area in your business and you only get to choose one that's the key on this mm. question you can only choose one area in your business and you could take some magic dust and sprinkle all over that one spot in the business and wake up tomorrow it's 10 times better than it is today where would you choose to put that magic dust probably marketing probably marketing because marketing will allow people to get an insight to, uh, um, due to social media, and especially with my Instagram, I share a lot of, you know, do's, don'ts, what happens behind the scenes. And I think um, when you're able to open up marketing for people to have more eyes on what's going on, they can see that everything doesn't happen overnight. You know, it takes a little bit of a process. There may be mistakes, you know, there may be miscalculations, there may be redos. So when you open up this marketing aspect and everyone can see in and pay more attention to what's going on, it's not really about money. It's really about the process of being able to get things done. So mm. marketing leaded to being able to see what's really, you know, how long it takes because everyone thinks there's a magic brush that you come in and you just, and then it's done, kitchen is done, countertop is done and everything is perfect. And I'm, you know, but it's not so. 
Oh, that's good, Ari, to put some magic on. Um, <laughs> yeah. so I, I do always like to end on one very specific question, but before we get to that, um, for those that are in the audience that are watching, that want to connect with you, that want to follow the work that you're doing, that want to reach out to you and say, hey, I might have you know a, a project to do here sometime cool. soon, uh, where can we advise them to go for more information? Well, there's, of course, I have a website and Instagram. I try to answer any DMs and stuff that come in. And my Instagram is at European Kitchen Installation. Um, and my website is, you know, a European Kitchen Installation. I have pictures of past and future projects and, you know, what's going on and about my history. So there's, I'm, I'm very easily accessible, you know, and, and my phone number is there too. So especially for people locally in Austin, is any you can reach out to me very very easily for even just a, you know a consultation as far as what do you think or whatever like i'm i'm open to be able to help in anyone especially when it comes to homeowners that have a lot of questions that don't have the experience so european kitchen installation everywhere you can just punch it in and it'll pop up <laughs> Beautiful. For those that are watching, I will put all of that in the video description below. So make sure you go click the links, check it all out. Give them a follow on Instagram, send them a DM, say, Hey, I saw you on the business spotlight. Great <laughs> conversation. Um, it's always, it's always fun to see additional connections, things like that happen from, from these conversations. So please take the time, go down, do that once we wrap up the conversation here. Um, but Marvin, as we, as we wrap up, I always like to end on this very specific final question. And that is what is most inspiring to you today? The most inspiring thing to me today is honestly in in the trade aspect that we have going on is the collaboration of people you know where we're we're all coming together you know to plumbers electricians and 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 homeowners and tile guys coming together to provide a product that you know that lasts forever and that people can share and and family having dinner in front of what you've created. And I think it's a very respectable thing to be able to kind of come together and do that. And I think we should all be more, you know, more commended and more happy about, you know, having a trade and being a tradesman. And I think it's a, it's a very admirable thing to do. And then, mm -hmm. you know, working with your hands and just being a tradesman and having respect for what you do. I think it should be celebrated. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Marvin, I want to say thank you again for taking the time to, to be here with us, to share your story, to share some knowledge nuggets along the way that you've learned. Um, it's, it's really been a pleasure. I just want to say thank you again for taking the time. Thank you. No problem. Welcome. It's all my pleasure.